What's going on everybody, Josh Pocock here. And lately we've had some recent releases from OpenAI with O1, O1 Mini, and we've even now had some releases from some of the open source models. And in today's video, we're gonna be looking at DeepSeek version 2.5, seeing how some of its coding capabilities are with these new updates, and seeing how it even compares to tools like O1 and Clawsonet 3.5. Is open source catching up? Let's dive right into it. All right, guys, so if you're not familiar with DeepSeek, I've done a video on DeepSeek V2 before, but now there's version 2.5. And this is a Chinese company, and uh, they have some really, it's one of the best open source, uh, you know, AIs for coding. There's Quen 2.5, there's DeepSeek 2.5, there's other ones too, but, but it's pretty cost effective and pretty good. So as you can see here, DeepSeek tweeted out, exciting news, we've officially launched DeepSeek version 2.5, a powerful combination of DeepSeek V2 and DeepSeek Coder V2. So the previous models, now with enhanced writing, instruction following, and human preference alignment, it's available on web and API, enjoy seamless call function calling, FIM, JSON output, all in one. Note, due to significant updates in this version, if performance drops in certain cases, we recommend adjusting the system prompt and temperature settings for best results. And you can see here, a little diagram showing the two base models, uh, instruct model, and coder model right here and you see that DeepSeek version 2.5 is essentially a combination to get the best of that and you can see they posted a graph right here showing that it outperforms DeepSeek v2 and DeepSeek v2 coder on most benchmarks and they also posted their internal Chinese evaluations DeepSeek v2.5 shows a significant improvement in win rates against GPT 4.0 mini and 4.0 latest judged by GPT 4.0 compared to DeepSeek version 2. So we can see the comparisons right here versus V2 versus GPT 4.0 and then V2.5 versus GPT 4.0. Now, interestingly enough, Ader's uh, leaderboard benchmarks show that DeepSeek version 2.5 actually did a little bit worse than the coder for V2 in their benchmark test. Um, but at the same time, different people's benchmarks are different. I'm going to assume that DeepSeek probably did more extensive testing on their own models than just maybe Ader did here in this test, but I can't fully say. We're going to see how it actually stands up in our test today. All right, here's someone tweeting out DeepSeek 2.5 versus GPT 4.0 for coding, 21 times cheaper than Claude Sonnet 3.5 and 18 times cheaper than GPT 4.0. And we can see this human eval score got an 89, Claude got 92, and GPT 4.0 got uh, 90. Okay, so the pricing is 14 cents per million input tokens and 28 cents per million output tokens. So you can go to deepseek.com and you can get access to their API. You can add some credits and you can build within the API to use DeepSeek. It's also OpenAI compatible for base URLs. Now you can see their benchmarks right here. Now I'm not going to go through them all right now because we're going to dive into this testing here. But if you want to pause this or go check them out yourself, links will be down below. And lastly, before we dive in, you can actually get access to DeepSeek version 2.5 either on Hugging Face or you can also get access to it on Olama. I'll leave links to them below as well. But today we're going to be accessing it in the chat interface. So as you can see here in the chat interface, and we can either use version 2.5 or the coder version 2.5. So we'll be testing these out now. All right, so here is our testing questions. And I did a video not too long ago actually comparing O1 Mini and O1 Preview versus Claude Sonnet. So we're going to use these same questions and see how DeepSeek version 2.5 compares to these top frontier models on these questions. So let's get the first one going. All right, so the first one was a simple one and I expected it to get it right. It is what is the capital of Canada? And it did with that being Ottawa. Next is write a Python function to generate the Fibonacci sequence up to the 10th number. All right, so it's generating this and it's pretty good for speed wise. It's not super fast, but you can see here, they also got a new feature that is similar to something like Claude Sonnet artifacts. And um, depending on the code, you can actually get somewhat of an artifact when it's generating the code and actually get some sort of visual. All right, so I do like the output here. One thing I like the, the chat UI and everything like that, but it did a good explanation right here as well. And it's telling us what the output should be. So let's go ahead and test this code. All right, so I'm gonna run python fib.py and boom, it got it correct. All right, so that's two for two. 
Next prompt is generate a bash script to create 10 files with the names a1.txt to a10.txt. All right, so I just ran it and it worked. And you can see that it's actually the exact same script essentially as the one that 01 and Claude Sonnet 3.5 created. They all actually created the same one. So it's a fairly simple script. So that makes sense. So that's three for three. Now let's get into the fourth question. So if you multiply the number of days in a week by the number of continents, what do you get? So a very basic math question and it got it right. All right, another math question, solve for X, 3X plus seven equals 22. And the answer is five. So it got that correct too. So it's five for five. Next question is a factory produces widgets at a rate that doubles every three days. If it produces a hundred widgets on day one, how many widgets will it produce on day 19? Explain your reasoning step by step. All right, and I got that correct too at 6,400 widgets on day 19. Next, we're gonna ask it to generate a SVG of a tree. So as you can see here, we have this run HTML button. And if you run it, you can actually see that this looks like a tree. So I really like this new feature and it definitely did pass this. Okay, next is a question that neither of 01 nor Claude Sonnet 3.5 got correct. So I don't have my hopes too high for this, but generate 13 sentences that have the word that have 10 words and end in the word monkey. Okay, so it got it wrong too. I even gave it a second chance and it got it wrong again. So that question's a fail. Next is generate me the Pong game using Python. All right, so we got the code here and I'm going to run it. Awesome. So we got the game of Pong here. And now one thing I really like about this generation now, now I'm not 100% sure if the other models did do this or not, but I noticed with DeepSeek, it actually explains to us how to play. So left paddle is W and S to move up and down. And the right paddle is up and down on the keyboards. Now I mentioned with the other test models that it's kind of annoying for Pong since you can't only, you can only move one, but I don't know if it did allow it to move two paddles. Now it looks like it's not bouncing off the Pong. Oh, okay. It is sometimes. Okay. Now it looks like it's working pretty well. This is actually better than some of the actual other models for generating the Pong game because it has a score. It's actually pretty good quality. And this is the first time I've actually been able to play versus myself. I don't know if I just missed those instructions on all the other times I've done tests, but, um, or maybe it did have these, this function, but it just didn't explain it to me like deep seek. I don't know, but either way, it definitely passes this test. Okay, next question is pretty easy and it passed. I'm an odd number, take one, uh, take away one letter and I become even, the number is seven. All right, so the next question is a man stands on one side of the river, his dog on the other. The man calls his dog who immediately crosses the river without getting wet and without using a bridge or a boat. How did the dog do it? Okay, so I expected that it actually may struggle with questions like these. There's mainly one I would say its strengths for being an open source model are really when it comes to the coding side of things. And it's also built by a Chinese company. So, you know, a lot of the data is it's trained on is probably Chinese language. So you can see here it answered the dog crossed the river by swimming across. The riddles wording is a little bit tricky as it mentions dog crossing without getting wet, but it doesn't specify that the dog has to stay dry to cross. The dog could have swum across a, swung across the river, which would technically mean it got wet, but it still crossed the river without using a bridge or a boat. So, eh, that's wrong. The, the correct answer is the river was frozen, which all these other models got correct, but this is its second fail. All right, so next question is create a landing page using CSS, JS, and HTML. It should be a website or a beauty store that has a header, banner, features, testimonials, and checkout section. Make it look professional and very modern. All right, and here is what we got. So, I mean, pretty basic, but technically a pass. Now, the one thing I will say is that I did specify in the prompt use CSS, JS, and HTML. So I did say JavaScript and it did give me JavaScript, but it says add any JS functionality here if needed. But, you know, I guess it's technically not needed. I think um, like O1 Preview gave me some JS right here when it generated the code, Not nothing crazy, but I will still give this a pass just because it did pretty much do it and it didn't ignore the JavaScript. It just really didn't give me anything. So I'd say it's a pass. All right, so another question that it may not get right here. You are in a room that has three switches and a closed door. The switches control three light bulbs on the other side of the door. Once you open the door, you may never touch the switches again. How can you definitely tell which switch is connected to each one of the light bulbs? 
All right, so it actually got it correct. Turn on the first switch and leave it on for a few minutes. This will cause the corresponding light bulb to heat up. Turn off the first switch and immediately turn on the second switch. This will cause the corresponding light bulb to light up and then leave the third switch off open the door and observe the light bulbs the light bulb that is on is controlled by the second switch the light bulb that is off is hot uh, off but it is hot is controlled by the first switch and the light bulb that is off and cold is controlled by the third switch all right so another one is i left my campsite and hiked south three miles then i turned east and hiked for three miles then i turned north and hiked for three miles at which i came across a bear inside my tent eating my food what color was the bear and it got this question correct because the only place you can hike three miles south and east and north and end up in the same position is the north pole meaning the bear would be white and the last question that claude actually got wrong in my test which was surprising but open ai's models did get right is how many words are in your answer here and it says the answer to your question is just one word one eh, incorrect Okay, so all in all, it actually did pretty good. It did better than I thought on some of these, you know, language or problem solving questions. And it did good on these coding questions, of course, because that's where its strengths are. So out of the 15 questions we tested it on today, it got three of them wrong, which comparative to O1 Mini and O1 Preview, it only got one test wrong. And for Claude's on, it actually got two tests wrong. So of course this isn't the most in-depth testing and I'll definitely continue trying to improve these tests over time for new models that come out. But what I will say is that these open source models, especially when it comes to coding, are definitely getting uh, really good improvements and it's going to be interesting to see as you know time goes on over the next year or so how these open source models will compare to closed source models. Is there going to be a tipping point where open source actually starts surpassing closed source? I don't think it's here yet, but I will say that it is really useful sometimes to actually code using these open source models. One, because it's open source, and two, a lot of the time it's a way more cost effective than some of these closed source models. And for certain things, especially like autocomplete or some of these other coding tasks where you don't need such an extremely powerful model, then it actually makes a lot more sense to use models like DeepSeek 2.5. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. How do you feel about these open source models compared to these closed source models? As well as if you are using open source models, whether that's in Olama, LLM Studio, what is your favorite open source model? Is it DeepSeek 2.5? Is it Quen 2.5? Is it whatever the case may be? Let me know in the comments down below, guys. And if you're new here, we upload videos every single day on AI, automation, business growth. So if you're into that type of content and you got some value from this video, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to stay up to date with the daily uploads. Also too, guys, check out our free stride community. Link for that will be in the description down below for our free Discord channel, free Facebook group. You can join there, connect with myself as well as other like-minded individuals. Other than that, guys, I will see you in tomorrow's video. Keep hustling, keep grinding, and of course, guys, accelerate your stride. Take care.